you guys are besties. Yeah. Yes. So how did you guys meet? Uh, we met several years ago through the writer, Catherine Puget. Mm -hmm. uh, she had asked both of us to participate in a sort of brainstorming session about a script that she was potentially writing and uh, we just hit it off. So that was the beginning of it. Actually, do you know the first time I actually met you mm -hmm. was at the Xena convention at the Burbank Hilton. Yes, yes, yes. And Lucy wasn't available so they asked me to do what ended up being a very poor representation of Xena Warrior Princess <laughs> so that they could finally give um, Lucy and Renee's characters uh, some closure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Adrian was there, you were there, and Adrian was doing this beautiful um, project where you were interviewing people about love. Yes, um, I have my little mob project from the mouths of babes, and I was just interviewing everyone, and I cornered you, and I asked you <laughs> all of these uh, deep, meaningful questions, which not everybody answers deep and meaningfully, but you did. Oh, just... Jesus. Well, and unbeknownst to Adrian at the time, my marriage was just on life support. And so I was speaking from this very, well, fundamentally, it wasn't just aspirational, but just my core truth of what I believe love to be. And it's really quite painful to be sitting with that and answering those questions mm -hmm. and knowing that I wasn't in that experience at the time. Um, and then when I look at little snippets of it, you showed it to me or somehow I saw it and I was like, God, I just looked, you could see it on my face, mm -hmm. knowing me and looking back at it, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought that you guys would have met when you were actually on the program, uh, Zena. I mean, I think, had your character even started when I was doing No, because my character didn't exist until Lucy Lawless got pregnant in real life. <laughs> so, yeah, so I came along at the tail end. Yeah. That happened to me. That's really fun when one of the leading ladies or the leading lady gets gets up the duff, as we would say in Australia, and then they suddenly have to get very creative with their storylines and a new opportunity emerges for someone else. <laughs> well, that, that happened to you, uh, Claudia, on Stargate. That's exactly right. Amanda Tapping was starting her family and they said, gosh, we've got to find a way to attempt to fill the void, not that she's replaceable in any way. So they thought, let's just take a complete extreme turn and throw in different energy, which they'd done years before with me when a show was Country practice, that was my first big break when I was 20, I think 21, and I played Nurse Claire Bonacci. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm highly qualified now to put band-aids on people. Um, my mum and I joke about it all the time because my parents are both doctors, so watching me play this ditzy country nurse is pretty <laughs> hilarious for them. Anyway, um, they the same thing with country practice, the show is that they just cast me and then they heard that the network, network was about to drop the show. And they said, let's make her a regular character and just revamp the show. She'll be the breath of fresh air that we're, we're, everyone's been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> so, several wow. times that happened. Like I was the risk mm -hmm. and it didn't necessarily pay off. Back in the day, they used to bring Ted McGinley in for that exact reason. You know, he, he killed Happy Days. He killed, you know, it just. I don't know. I think the shark and, and, and. Water yeah. skiing in a leather jacket probably killed that show. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think the writing uh, killed that show. Uh, when Claudia, when did you fall in love with acting? Um, good question. I mean, it sort of chooses you. Just watching the the Bee Gees documentary the other night it was really lovely to hear all these songwriters say songs aren't really written they're written through you, you know, they're sort of created through through someone. And so you kind of realized, I think early on that you're a vessel for something because things seem to just come out of you that you weren't expecting, especially at a young age. And you have no way of understanding why you're able to do something or tell a story or whatever. Um, I was a highly relational creature from a very young age, wasn't getting the attention I needed, classic younger child, and then um, was cut because I was so chatty in class with undiagnosed ADD. I would be cast as the lead in the school play, whatever it was, every year. So from kindergarten on, that was me. But I had a very musical background, so everyone assumed that I would do the music, but I ended up getting too much. It was, it was too loaded. You know, my ability to perform seemed predicated upon so many, you know, factors that you know, where failure wasn't really an option and I just would start to manifest physical symptoms and get sick because I had so much anxiety that I didn't understand. 
and acting was the back door in a way to sort of oh well I can I know I can sort of do this I had less experience with it but I want to give this a try because no one's expecting it of me. Adrian, how about you? Uh, growing up in Missouri, uh, wh when did you actually fall in love with performing and acting? Uh, well, I had been a dancer since I was tiny, so I had always been on stage, but it wasn't until my senior year of high school that I I literally fell into an acting class. I was I went to a photographer to get my senior portraits done, and he upsold me to take this class that he was trying to sell out for the weekend. and. I was kind of interested, but the truth is I just didn't know how to say no. Um, I just didn't really have that skill, <laughs> truthfully. And as so, James Lunder says, no is a full sentence. Exactly, but I had not yet learned that lesson. Yep. But in this one instance, it was a good thing because I took the weekend workshop at this little tiny town in Missouri. And strangely, it turns out that he was flying in casting directors from Los Angeles because he used to live there. And I ended up getting offered a job out of that weekend. The material they were using was what they were currently casting. And it was just like that. And my parents, of course, were like, uh, scam alert. They thought that was ridiculous. So of course the job didn't happen, but it lit a fire in me. Suddenly I knew it was possible. Like it wasn't just a dreamy thing. It was actually a potential career. And I just jumped in feet first. Uh, your parents were fully supporting you in, in this career move? Uh, once they realized there was absolutely no getting me to turn back on it, then yes. <laughs> I mean, they, I, I had certain requirements. I had to graduate uh, high school before I could move to California. And in California, I had to go to college. So there were certain markers that I had to fit. But as long as I did those, they were fully supportive. And they've honestly been wonderful ever since. They really loved it and got it, gotten a kick out of it. And, you know, sometimes it's humiliating and, you know, they're also there to help nurse my wounds. So it's all good. It is <laughs> all good. Claudia, good. your parents were in the medical field. Yeah. Uh, how did they how did they react when you said, I'm going to be a, an actress? Well, my dad, I think, was probably a frustrated comedian. I mean, he was first generation um, survivor, Holocaust survivor. So his parents escaped with three hours to spare and then yeah, they arrived on a boat from, you know, crossing through Europe from Canada down to Australia. And, and the minute they got off the boat, his dad just forbid any German to be spoken and they wanted to assimilate immediately. And and he had, and you know, and there was a, there, there were very tight parameters for kids in that situation. It was, you no, know, you're going to carve out a life for yourself. If you have any intelligence, you're going to be a doctor or you're going to be a lawyer or, you're, you know, that was very... Those were the professions that seemed to do well and they wanted their kids to have some kind of stability and set themselves up financially. So my dad went into obstetrics and gynecology because it was the most positive form of medicine in his day because back then it was, guess what, you're pregnant. And nowadays it's like, uh, so... <laughs> Have cash flow and debt issues made it difficult to make car, home, and credit card payments despite your best efforts? And are you facing foreclosure or repossession? The law offices of Paul J. Toscano understand that sometimes it's hard to make ends meet in today's economy and can help you in reducing or eliminating debt, protecting assets, and preventing creditor harassment and can provide you with experienced, diligent, on-your-side representation. Call or email us today to schedule a free confidential consultation. Millions of people are losing their dental coverage every year or can't afford dental care due to the high cost. Just a simple cleaning can cost over $100. But there is an answer, TDA. For about a dollar a day, Total Dental Administrators covers over 200 dental procedures. Whether you're an individual, a family, self-employed, or retired, TDA has a plan that's right for you, starting about a dollar a day. So call or click for your free information kit and see how affordable dental health can be. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work, show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no.
Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Was there a big audition process for Xena, Adrian? Uh, maybe, but I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. no, no, the 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 truth of it is, I was part of another project when Xena came calling initially, mm. and they were looking to cast Xena's nemesis, and that's all that they said about it. And so I literally turned down the audition because I couldn't really make it, but I didn't fight to try to make it because I thought there's no way they're going to cast someone who's a white brunette to play the nemesis. That's just never going to happen. I look too much like her. And so a couple of weeks passed, they didn't find what they wanted and came back to me. It ended up going my way. And it wasn't until after I was hired that I found out they were casting for her daughter. So all the stuff, it's such a lesson because mm. all the stuff that I thought was working against me was actually the magic weapons. So, wow. Yeah, trippy. Millie, take oh. that in. Exactly. Millie, I would really feel it in yeah. my body. Where do you feel that in your body? When uh, now it's everywhere. Oh my yeah. god, I'm so proud of me. <laughs> Buddy, how about for Stargate? Was that uh, the casting director? Was I mean, did you have to go up in front and audition for that? No, oh, that was one of those sort of rare offers, which was so lovely. And it's really hard to say, you know, what it is about your name. You just can't help it. Touch me. Help it. You're welcome. Can we just give a shout out to direct offers? Yes. I just feel like we want to really revel in oh it. Oh my we need God, to yes, please. Because it's, I think it's a miracle when I think about the jobs I've had. I don't know if you do this too, but so many people have to say yes yeah. to each person that's cast because people are spending stupid money. They may not be paying you the stupid money. Sometimes they do, but it's a fortune to make things. So yeah. it's really, I had ridiculous arrogance, I guess, when I was younger, not really taking in how many miracles had to occur for people to say yes to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'd been doing Farscape and it had sort of, some aspects of it had been really challenging for me, especially towards the end. And we'd been stuck in New York on 9-11 and I didn't know I had latent trauma by that stage. And so there were weird things happening for me towards the end of Farscape. And I just got this message from my agent saying, look, they'd really love you to do this bottle at for Stargate. Mm. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I've ever said this publicly. I think I have. I'd always, before, I loved the movie Stargate. I loved the original concept. I thought it was an extraordinary concept in terms of, you know, in the world of science fiction, loved it. And then when the show came on, I saw Chris Judge's thing on his head and I said, I would never work on a show because I've just been working for five years with the Jim Henson company. Yeah. And then I see Chris Judge's thing and I'm like, I would never work on a show where they stick a casino chip on someone's forehead and call that a makeup job. <laughs> Yeah, and, that's what, yeah. <laughs> and then here you are. <laughs> gotcha. Exactly. But, but the character, character, even though the, I don't like doing do-overs, so when people sort of tend to sort of stunt write, stunt cast you, and they keep you sort of do, repeating your own work and you become the punchline to your own joke rather than the joke that's been written, I thought about it, I was like, God, what would be the value of me doing this? And I thought this character has such enormous comedic potential and I have been the straight man for four or five years. Hmm. I'm going to do this and have a, an absolute blast. And I looked up who I'd be working with. It was Michael Shanks. And I really respected him as an actor. And I could tell that he didn't get to have much fun on the show. You know, RDA would get all the great jokes. And so I thought maybe there's an opportunity here for me and I to sort of play. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the first thing I said to him when I came to set. I took the job and said, thank you. And, and when I met him, I said, can I ask for something? He said, yeah. I said, is there anything you haven't had a chance to do yet? 
that you might be able to do? Can I support you in trying something new or doing something different in this episode? Because it's kind of like getting a get out of jail free card. And he just sort of didn't even know how to respond because he hadn't been placed in a situation where he was given that kind of permission and freedom. And listening to you talking about what you love about the radio plays, it is so high stakes normally when people are spending money you don't get to take risks as an actor. You are told down to what color your earrings are and how many necklaces you're wearing. And someone from up top has come down and had to approve everything. And I personally get to a point where I feel really encumbered and constricted. And this character, Vala, ended up being this incredible walking id. So these opportunities we get to play in a sandbox where people aren't really saying no that often, those are golden opportunities. Yeah. Adrian, your character on Xena, uh, was that a very athletic role for you? Uh, it was the most athletic one I'd ever had. I'd never really gotten to use my dance training. Yeah, it was the. It's certainly the most physical role I had ever had. It was the. It was where I learned all of my initial uh, stunt work training, all of that stuff. Um, and it it was exhilarating. I mean, it was really terrifying the first week when I was still trying to figure it out and also jet lagged and trying to remember names and lines, et cetera, et cetera. But in the end, I loved it. And I I, I have a real um, affinity for the physicality of any character. I wanna know what their posture is, what they, just what they appreciate uh, in terms of, you know, their movements. So yeah, that was a great lesson. And it was just, it was exhausting. It was such a tiring show to be that physical, that often out in the sun, all of that stuff. It was just, I mean, I slept like the dead every night, I'm sure. But yeah, it was it was fantastic. So yeah, I loved it. Uh, Claudia and, and, and Adrian, you both do a lot of the fan conventions around the world and they're they're starting to open up again and, and people are going. How do you how do you handle the fans? I mean, uh, I, I know um, it's got to be lovely to have people love you like they do, but do they really think that you're that character? I mean, I'm so lucky to have any fans whatsoever. Uh, it's an amazing s sentence to even say. But what's interesting is it has absolutely nothing to do with me. Mm. Um, you know, the it's it's the show, the writing, it's what they were in the middle of with their life when they experienced it. It's how it created something bigger than me in their life. And I'm just the token that sort of represents it. I don't know, it's such a, it's a, it's a really complete, and odd experience to go to a convention because unless people understand the world that we've inhabited they don't they don't really get it and it's an enormous privilege there are people who are more versed and have can be more articulate about work that i've participated in i don't have any memory of it and you know right. i i create I, i'll do my part i'll co-create and then i move on to the next job this portion of screen chatter is presented by vp dental check out our great dental plan starting at just 16 dollars per month have cash flow and debt issues made it difficult to make car home and credit card payments despite your best efforts and are you facing foreclosure or repossession the law offices of paul j toscano understand that sometimes it's hard to make ends meet in today's economy and can help you in reducing or eliminating debt protecting assets and preventing creditor harassment and can provide you with experienced diligent on your side representation call or email us today to schedule a free confidential consultation Millions of people are losing their dental coverage every year or can't afford dental care due to the high cost. Just a simple cleaning can cost over $100. But there is an answer, TDA. For about a dollar a day, Total Dental Administrators covers over 200 dental procedures. Whether you're an individual, a family, self-employed, or retired, TDA has a plan that's right for you, starting about a dollar a day. So call or click for your free information kit and see how affordable dental health can be. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here.
but you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. You know, during COVID, watching on way more television than I ever have in my life, I now feel really connected to certain shows. And I think about it, I'm like, I would be at a complete loss for words or a blabbering, bl blubbering <laughs> mess if I was to meet anyone in those shows because there's this bizarre intimacy that occurs for the viewer and it becomes extremely difficult to then be whatever normal is when you actually get to meet them. It's very mm. odd and it's unfair in a way because you just want to connect and be normal. I will say COVID has cured me of the politess that I've had up until now. Mm. I don't mm. want to hug strangers in photo ops. That's my mm. one thing that I, I haven't been able to shore up my own physical boundaries enough to mm. feel comfortable being around that much energy when there's thousands of people a day that you're around and then they're being shoved through like a horrible cattle call and they're paid money and it feels terrible and impersonal. And then you get shoved into a photo op and it's like this and we're having this really unnatural exchange. Yeah. That is aspect of it I'm just, I'm not comfortable with. So with COVID now I'll probably say, you know, not shaking hands, I'm sorry, and I'm just gonna stand next to you and give you my love from here and, it's interesting. Yeah. How do you feel? Are you ready to sort of? Uh, my opinion on that changes five times a day, just depending on how confident I'm feeling and all the, whatever the current COVID details are. But mm -hmm. I, what I do appreciate is I do think people are brainstorming really deeply to come up with interesting experiences for fans that are new and different mm -hmm. and are more evolved than, the, than they have been in the past. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for that because I think there can be something that's really satisfying for all involved because everybody has the same concerns. I mean, you know, it's these giant rooms full of people and it suddenly seems like danger Will Robinson, but in a legit way, not a sci-fi way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, 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 not actually be higher. People right. attend the convention and half of them die. <laughs> Yes. Mm. Strange theater. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, you're you're frozen in time. They 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 see you on the reruns and reruns, and then when they see you in person, it's kind of a shock for them. Oh, are you calling us old? Yeah. Wait, what? what is happening? No, but I'm no, I'm calling I'm calling Claudia blonde. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if I can speak to you anymore. Mm. No, I. I <laughs> <laughs> but take yourself out, Tony. Take yourself. No, Claudia's <laughs> blonde no, now. She no. used to be dark haired, and now she's blonde. Um, no, I get what you're saying. It can be, you know, people do see us in a specific way because they've spent so much time with us in that one environment. And I think it depends on the person that you're meeting. I think sometimes they're really excited to see the next evolution of who you are and what you've become. And I think sometimes they're honestly disappointed because. They want you to be exactly what you were, which is just not possible. So, you know, it's a mix. It just depends. And that's on them. Yes, and that's on them, totally. You know, we are almost done with our interview. The time has just flown by, except for the last minute and a half where I, you know, <laughs> I'm going to edit were out. Sweating you know. bullets. <laughs> uh, oh God, you know, if I offend Adrian, then my, my whole family will kill me. Oh, oh, yeah, it'll be bad. Oh, yikes. <laughs> I'll tell you, well, Adrian and I, uh, you know, I come out a couple of times a year and I always I always call her when I'm out and I uh, we go to the Hollywood Horror Nights together in, at Universal because I, I host that. I do I do stuff. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. So you're invited. You're going to be invited. I, well, that's sort of sort of in my neighborhood because, you know, I'm a Hollywood girl, but I 
every time I've tried, there's been an issue. It's so funny. We sort of would set it up with friends, go, let's just meet at the Hollywood Horror Nights and have fun because I've heard about it. I was obviously I didn't grow up with it. And every time I've attempted to go, it hasn't worked. I even thought about it the other day. I was like, I wonder if that will be open. That would be really fun to go to. But we always have dinner at where? Uh, Bubba Gump Shrimp. Bubba Gump Shrimp. Yeah, that's where we have our... Do you have the shrimp soup, the shrimp salad, the shrimp pasta, the shrimp rice? What do you have? Shrimp we have gumbo. well, we have the shrimp gumbo, the shrimp, uh, the fried shrimp, the coconut shrimp, the battered shrimp. Oh, coconut yeah. shrimp. Oh, yeah. That's hard to beat. <laughs> As a single mom, I want to make sure my kids have healthy teeth. Going to the dentist can be expensive. Just a simple cleaning can cost over $100. Then I found TDA. And for about a dollar a day, Total Dental Administrators covers my family on over 200 dental procedures. Whether you're an individual, a family, self-employed, or retired, your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these policies. Call or click for your free information kit and see how affordable dental health can be. Have cash flow and debt issues made it difficult to make car, home, and credit card payments despite your best efforts? And are you facing foreclosure or repossession? The law offices of Paul J. Toscano understand that sometimes it's hard to make ends meet in today's economy and can help you in reducing or eliminating debt, protecting assets, and preventing creditor harassment and can provide you with experienced, diligent, on your side representation. Call or email us today to schedule a free confidential consultation. Millions of people are losing their dental coverage every year or can't afford dental care due to the high cost. Just a simple cleaning can cost over $100. But there is an answer, TDA. For about a dollar a day, Total Dental Administrators covers over 200 dental procedures. Whether you're an individual, a family, self-employed, or retired, TDA has a plan that's right for you, starting about a dollar a day. So call or click for your free information kit and see how affordable dental health can be. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer code. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. I want to thank you both for, for for doing this. This is such a joy, and this is what I I honestly I I would love Screen Chatter to be is just this wonderful open conversation. We learn a little bit about each other. Clearly, learned some important things about us today. I'm terrified. I was just thinking if this was educational, right. I have no clue what people are now. And but it was fun. Na, 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 na. Are we there yet? Yep. We're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org.